Hey, anybody want to query the ServiceNow database with me? Write a little SQL, perhaps? I feel like such a rebel, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write some code that queries the ServiceNow database and pulls back a set of records, user records, but could be any kind of record. We'll then count the records, make sure we got the right amount, and then I'm going to loop through the records and display the name of each user on the screen. I sort of figure that if I can do that, I can do pretty much anything because everybody knows that in ServiceNow, pretty much everything is just a record in the database somewhere. So check this out. First, let's look at the user records in the UI, and we can do that by navigating to System Security Users. And here they are. And down here, I can see there are 625 user records. Remember that number? We'll use that to test our query. Now, to write the query, I need to know the name of the database table where these records are stored. And I figured out how I can see that by hovering over a column header, any column header, and clicking on these three dots. This is called the Column Context menu, and then choosing Configure Table. And this opens the actual structure of the table, or the dictionary. And I can see right here, the name of the table in the database is sys underscore user. We'll need that. And if we look down here, we can see the names and other stuff about the columns in the table. If we look here, here's the first name field, first underscore name, and the last name field, last underscore name. Okay, that's enough. Let's write some code. First, we need some place to write and execute our code. To do that, I can navigate to System Definition, Scripts, Background. I have no idea why it's named that, but it opens up a really simple script editor that ServiceNow provides for writing and running code. The SQL, or Structured Query Language, is the language you use normally to query the database. If you don't know SQL, no worries. I'll show you how simple it can be. We want to select a list of records from the table named sys underscore user. In SQL, that's written as select star from sys underscore user. You can think of the star as the wildcard character, meaning everything. So essentially, select everything from the sys user table. Perfect. And I'll run that, and we get an error. And here's why. Notice up here, it says run script JavaScript executed on the server. We wrote SQL, not JavaScript. And we need some JavaScript, and here's why. Remember when I said earlier that pretty much everything in ServiceNow is a record in a database table somewhere? Well, that's really true. The heart and soul of ServiceNow is the database, and as a result, it's highly protected. They don't want just any code slinger like me to connect to it directly and run SQL. But we aren't dead yet. What we can do is write JavaScript, and fortunately, ServiceNow provides us with a JavaScript class for querying the database. It's just a hoop we have to jump through. The name of that JavaScript class is Glide Record. Let's Google it. And here you can see the ServiceNow developer documentation for what Glide Record is and does and how to use it. Here it says it's the API you use for database operation, that it's a primary means of interacting with the database. Excellent. As you can see, it does a lot of stuff. I won't read all this, but I'll provide the link to the description in the video for your perusing. So let's go back to the script and try this again, this time with JavaScript, but don't leave. I promise this is really simple, just two lines of script. We'll start by creating a variable to store our query results. Let's call it users. Next, we need to use that glide record class to interact with the database. So we'll set our variable equal to a new instance of that class. And finally, we tell the Glide Record class which table we want to work with. We do that by entering the table name in the parentheses. 
sys underscore user. That's pretty much it. So this in JavaScript equals this in SQL. Now we just tell it to execute a query and we're done. Let's run this. And look at that, our script executed and really fast. We queried the ServiceNow database, but where's the data? Looking back at our script, can you guess where the data is? It's in our variable named users, but it's invisible unless we do something to display it. Let's do that real quick. First, let's see how many records we got back. The glide record class has a function named get row count that we can use to tell us how many records our query returned. So we can say users dot get row count. Now we need to use a super simple JavaScript function to display that on the screen. And this one you're just going to have to remember, but it's easy. It's gs.info. It's a special little JavaScript function that will display on the screen anything you put inside the parentheses. So let's put our row count in there and run that. Boom biscuit, 625. And that matches the number of records we expected. I just love it when a plan comes together. So we know our query is working, but this would be way more satisfying if we could actually see the data. And to do that, we'll need just a couple more lines of code. First, Glad Record has a function for pulling out the records of our query one at a time. It's called next, and it does just that, get the next record. So I can say users.next. Very good. Glad Record also has a function for getting the data out of the records fields. It's called get value. You specify which field value you want by passing the field name inside the parentheses. So I can enter users.getValue and then we'll tell it first underscore name. If you remember, that was the name of our first name field. And now I'll build a loop. There are several ways in JavaScript to create a loop. I'll use a while loop. The while loop just runs as long as some condition is met and the condition is inside the parentheses. And then what it does is it executes what you put inside the brackets each time it loops. So I will say while and then in the parentheses I'm going to say users.next and then between the brackets I'm going to tell it what I want it to do and I'll put my get value statement there. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I want to display my value, not just get it. So I'll add my gs.info function. So essentially what we have is a loop that says loop while users.next is true. And that essentially means until we reach the end and there are no more records. And for each time you loop, get the first name of the record and display it on the screen. Awesome. Let's run it. Boom biscuits. Sorry about that. Sometimes I get a little excited about this stuff, but you have to admit it's pretty cool. We just queried the ServiceNow database user table, not using SQL, but using JavaScript and the Glide Record API. And then we counted and displayed the number of records we got back it matched perfectly. And then we looped through our result set and we displayed the name of each user on the screen. And these are the kinds of things that a ServiceNow developer would be doing every day. And I'll be publishing many more developer related videos on my YouTube channel, ServiceNow Simple. And if you're into that sort of thing, I would love it if you'd consider subscribing to the channel. In the meantime, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.